Yeah. Um, so you talk about ayahuasca as um, almost like a joyride on some level, like it's a. It, one of the question, a question I have is, what are the when you take ayahuasca and psilocybin acid, those three things, what does each one specifically, if you can take it in a nutshell, what, what direction each one goes, what would you say if you made a sentence for each one of those to understand the difference? Well, a sentence, <laughs> aha, <coughs> a, a boundary I may not be able to tolerate. <laughs> um, well, just roughly, the feeling with ayahuasca is that it's Gaian. It's earth-oriented. You feel the river. You feel the jungle. You feel the drama and pain and nobility of life and death. And it's visceral. You know, it's about the meat and, and, and the jungle. And uh, it's feminine. And then the character, is, the character of the hallucinations is it's as though it's like a camera eye. It's largely silent, but it's just an eye that is moving through a vast matrix of visual information. And after a good ayahuasca trip, you just feel like you want to rub your eyes. You say, my, you know, I've just been looking and looking. It's like a trip to Madison Avenue with money in your pocket. You've just been looking and looking and looking and looking for hours at this stuff. And um, it's, in, it's almost invariably beautiful in, a, in a, a jeweled, filigreed, multi-leveled, transparent, glittering, flowing kind of way. And it almost always takes place against a black background for some reason. These things, it goes on against a black background. Okay, then psilocybin which is just an atom's twist away, is a very different creature. The most astonishing thing about psilocybin, and you're hearing this from, you know, a materialist of some sort, is that it speaks. It, it has a voice. And if you don't think this is confounding to the rational mind to come upon this in the detritus of your mind's attic, it can talk to you and, and astound you with its insight, humor, uh, ability to connect and make uh, insightful inclusions and so forth and so on. And the whole thing, the whole psilocybin experience is imbued with this eerie energy, which has different names, but elfin, gnomic, extraterrestrial, um, you know, they're, they're shiny-eyed and small, and there's chattering. And the other thing is there are machines. The, the psilocybin visions have a tendency to drift toward technoscapes, enormous machines in orbit around alien planets and strange architectonic forms where you don't know whether you're wandering around inside somebody's cathedral or their television set. And, uh, and the whole thing has this off-world, we are the Galactarian civilization, we hold the key to the history of this sector of the Kiliochasm, we, we, you know, it's this kind of thing, almost blast of trumpets and, uh, and the ringing up of cosmic curtains. It's very, very dramatic, Wagnerian and uh, forward-looking. It's about the destiny of the race and why planets are put in place and what it's all for. Could hardly be different from ayahuasca. And yet, you know, an atom's twist away. Um, then DMT, you know, rests in some even weirder domain of triangulation. DMT, you don't only hear the voice, but if you get a sufficiently uh, heroic dose, it's like you break through into the control room where all the secrets are being run from and built, and uh, there's this unbelievable sense of finding out, finding out 
beyond your wildest dreams of ever finding out. And it's an inhabited mind space of some sort that is so unexpected and so convincingly real that you actually, I think, a person who doesn't fear for their sanity has already lost it at that point. Because it is without a doubt, you know, the absolutely the last thing you ever expected to have happen to you, that you would burst into some some place somewhere where there would be these chattering, self-transforming linguistic creatures that are made out of light and punning intentionality and are, are trying to get you to perform some unimaginable task that is somehow caught up with the unravelment of the space-time continuum and the destiny of the species and so forth and so on and you know this is at 30 seconds into a trip that lasts a minute and a half and then you're returned to you know you and your friends and your concerns um, LSD is not animated in this way. It, it is more like uh, the classical expectation people have, I think, who have not taken these things of what a psychedelic drug should be. In other words, you think clearer, you see connections, you can hold very complex ideas in your mind and rotate them and look at them from many angles. You experience emotional abreactions, you recover childhood memories, you are able to straighten your karma out with people, you are undergoing rapid psychological uh, growth. Uh, under the influence of LSD, but it, it doesn't... Ten the, uh, the reason I am not so keen on LSD is that I'm really a plant guy, not a drug guy. And it, it's something about these substances that have been carried along in the genomes of these plants for, in some cases, hundreds of millions of years. And why? You know, what are these things doing? for the plants, and then what, how can a molecule so simple, this is another puzzle in all of this, these molecules are planar, that means they're flat, they're simple, sometimes 20, 30 atoms, and yet uh, they totally transform your entire consciousness. This is the equivalent of a red ant who can rip down the Empire State Building in an hour and a half. I mean, why is mind so delicately poised that such a tiny amount of pharmaceutical material can create such vast changes? And then another puzzle, as long as I'm listing my favorite mysteries, and this is the one that really got me into this in the beginning, because my early inclination was toward art history, and that is a very simple question. Where do the images come from? Where does this stuff come from? I mean, it is so unreferent to the ocean of commercially produced imagery in which we swim. You know, we are constantly bombarded by the images of television and Hollywood and so forth and so on. And yet the psychedelic species of visual beauty is not, we don't see it in our furniture styles and our architecture. It seems to be coming in literally from another dimension. And yet it is undeniably moving. It's beautiful. And I, I am puzzled why I, as an ordinary person, under the influence of, let us say, 30 milligrams of psilocybin, can see more art in an hour than Western civilization has produced in the past thousand years. And that tells you how little of we're getting from the art river back to the village where we can drink it. Niagara's of beauty are flowing by untapped by ordinary consciousness. 
And, you know, uh, uh, would that we could send robots who could film these psychedelic realities. Perhaps, uh, you know, virtual reality will develop into a technology where we are able finally to reconstruct and agree upon the content of the psychedelic experience. But to me, that's almost like the metaphysical stamp of approval on the psychedelic experience. Beauty is an, the, the presence of so much beauty is an argument to me that truth cannot be far away. Yeah. Are you aware of any spontaneous trips 